Good morning, I'm Jean-Pierre Rosen from EDALOG and I'm going to present how EDA deals with the issues of numerics. First of all, what is numerical analysis? The problem is that the mathematical set that we call real numbers cannot be represented on a computer because it has an infinite number of values, even if you consider only a bounded segment of the reals, and a computer can, in any case, represent exactly only rational value. But pi is irrational. If you want to compute the area of a circle, then you need absolutely irrational value, but you cannot have them. So numerical analysis is about making not too wrong computations in the real world, with pun intended, using only a finite subset of rational numbers that can be represented on a computer. There are various ways to represent those numbers. Actually, the computers have very different formats for representing real. For example, that link uh, leads you to a paper that describes 76 different floating point forms. Even the famous I-triple 754 defines five th standard formats for the real numbers, plus some extension. Another interesting case is the VAX computer, the regretted VAX computer, where you had four floating point formats, but two of them were on 64 bits, one with more mentissa, providing more accuracy, and the other one with a bigger exponent, therefore providing more range. So you see that saying, long float, for example, could not describe this case where on the same number of bits, you had different uh, representation of floating point numbers. How did programming languages address this issue? Well, for a long time, they followed the legacy of Fortran. Fortran had only two uh, definitions, real and double precision because that was what was available on the computer where Fortran was designed. Then some programming languages added some more formats, but it's basically saying, I want a big or a small real number without any indication about the kind of accuracy you needed. And of course, real didn't mean the same thing from a computer to another one. There was no portability. So EDA was built with requirements, and one of the requirements was to have portable results for real computation, even on various architecture, without imposing a particular architecture, because this would have led to an uh, efficiency penalty for the computers that did not have that architecture. That was a big mistake of Java to impose the IEEE format because it's not usable with any other kind of computer. The solution found by Ada was to follow the model of approximate values in physics. You know, when a physicist does an experiment, he doesn't consider just the measured point, the small circles here. Each measure has a certain uncertainty, and therefore the measurement is represented as a little segment. And if the physicist is lucky, he will find a straight line that goes through all segments, and then we can say that the phenomenon is linear. You will never find a straight line that goes through exactly through all the measured point, of course. So we have that idea that the point of measure does not represent only itself, but a small segment of the real axis. There are two ways of defining those segments. 
what is called a relative approximation where delta x over x is constant. It translates uh, like something saying, okay, my voltage is five volts plus or minus five percent. So as the value grows, you have more uncertainty or you have absolute approximation where delta x is constant and something like five volts plus or minus 0 0.1 volt on the whole range. The uncertainty is the same over the whole range. Therefore, we are in ADA, we have two kinds of real types. What we call real covers both the usual floating point type, the one that you know in most of the languages. So this is the syntax, and you see that you give a type with the number of significant digits in decimal representation that you want. So for example, here, if I want to represent an, a length on the Earth, on the surface of the Earth, I need five significant digits. So it's an approximation of 10 to the minus 5 over the range from 0 to 40 exponent 6 meters. And you have fixed point type. They come into flavor, binary and decimal, but the principle is the same, where you specify the, um, the absolute uh, step that you want, the delta, and the range of value. So typical example, my volts here, if I want one uh, hundredth of a volt over the range 0 to 100, or typically for decimal numbers, euros, as uh, with a, a step, if you want, of 0 0.01 a cent over 11 digits. The decimal numbers correspond uh, on machines that have them to uh, binary coded decimal. And so the principle is that you specify the minimal accuracy that comes from your requirements, and then the compiler will choose among all available hardware type the one that fits best your requirements. So all hard all available hardware types can be used. And if the compiler does not find an appropriate type, then it will be rejected at compile time. If you need, say, 20 digits of accuracy and your computer doesn't have 20 digits, then you'd better know that as soon as possible, because either you change your requirements or you have to change your computer. When you have a computation, you have several cases. First is arithmetic that can be done at compile time. Sometimes you have various constants that you multiply by other constants to give you a factor of scaling, some various things like that. If the, an expression can be evaluated at compile time, then the standard guarantees that it will be exact. It means that 1 divided by 3 multiplied by 3 will give you 1 exactly and not 0 0.999999 or 1.00001. That's not easy. It might say it means that the compiler must implement multi-precision rational arithmetic. But the compiler did that, and so all everything that you can write will be evaluated exactly. Then you have dynamic evaluation, expression that are evaluated at trend time. So here we are blocked, of course, by the accuracy of the computer. You have two modes. In the so-called relaxed mode, you have a guarantee that the data will be represented with the required accuracy. But you have no guarantee about the way arithmetic operations perform. 
And for compiler that conform to the optional annex G, the numerics annex, then in addition, you have a strict mode that will put requirements on the accuracy of all operations, including the operation from the standard mathematical library. And that's important because in other languages, you try to have a good signed function, but nobody knows what is the accuracy of the signed function. Here, you have guaranteed accuracy for all uh, elementary functions. So, how does it work for usual operation? The model, it uses a, mo a model called the Brown's model, which dates back to the, to the 80s by Mr. Brown, who invented that. The principle is that when you define a type, you have a certain, certain number that are represented exactly on the machine according to the definition of your type. These are called model numbers. When you do an operation between two model numbers and the result, for the mathematical result, falls exactly on a model number, then the computation must provide you with exactly that model number. That means that 1.0 plus 1.0 is exactly 2.0. It's important because people often see right, uh, real numbers with a kind of fuzz, uh, something that's of unknown accuracy. If you know what you are doing and process correctly model numbers, then you can predict the exact outcome of a mathematical operation. Now, if you have two model numbers and an operation whose mathematical result falls between two model numbers, then the computer can provide any value uh, in what is called the model interval. That's the interval that is limited by the two adjacent model numbers. So you are not required to round up or to round down. You can even keep a more accurate value if you have extra values that can be represented in the computer. So you can keep a, a more accurate uh, result, but at most the result is rounded up or down to the next model number. Now, if you have several computation, you may have two operands where the, the inaccuracy accumulates. So if you have two numbers that belong to some model interval, you consider all the possible values of each of the operands, and you perform the operation on all the possible values. That gives you a range, which is not necessarily bounded by model number. And then that range is extended to the two adjacent num uh, model numbers that surround it. So this, in practice, applies the usual rules of approximation that we know in physics like for uh, relative approximations, uh, uncertainty adds up when you do a multiplication, and they add up for, uh, straight for uh, fixed uncertainty when you do an addition. That's almost the same rule, plus that little digitalizing effect that you always extend the result to the adjacent model number. A consequence of that model is that you have no notion of overflow, because of underflow, sorry, because 
Well, it may happen that the model interval of the result covers zero. In that case, well, zero is an acceptable value for the result, but there is no special case wherein the result of an operation gives you a plain zero. It's just accepted by the model. So when you are doing real computation, you may, what will happen if you are doing the same computation on two different computers? Nothing, nothing forces the two computers to give you exactly the same result. It is likely that on two different computers, implementation A will find a result and implementation B a different result. But what you know is that those two different results will belong to a result interval that is guaranteed by the language and that can be computed independently of any machine architecture. So you are not granted a value, you are granted a maximum error value and all implementation will guarantee that maximum uh, inaccuracy. So that's a model that has the benefit to be compatible with any hardware while it's still pointing, putting reasonable bounds on the, the difference between two implementations. I stress a little bit those fixed points because that's something that most of you presumably don't have not encountered in language in other languages. A floating point has that um, that kind of um, representation where numbers are very close to each other when you are close to zero and as you go farther from zero the the gap between two numbers gets wider and wider why for fixed point you have the same gap between numbers over the whole range so depending on what you need one or the other might be more appropriate Typically, fixed points are used to represent time. In general, in computers, you have a time zero, but it's arbitrary. I mean, unless you are modeling the Big Bang, you don't need more accuracy close to zero than away from zero. And if you use a floating point type to represent time, then as time passes, your uncertainty increases, and that can be very annoying. Also for physical measures, that can be quite useful, because most of physical devices have linear scale. I've never seen a logarithmic uh, voltmeter, for example. They are all linear. So, a linear scale is a better representation, a better modeling of a voltmeter. And of course, money must be represented by floating points. By the way, it is forbidden by law to represent money with floating points because they, you cannot have approximations the way uh, it works with floating points. So when you are doing um, computation in floats, with this model, you have two possibilities. First, what I call a posteriori accuracy. It means you want to use just the regular floating points of your computer. So you can use types like float and long float. These, the floating point types that are natural to the hardware are predefined like in any language with names like float and long float. Of course, you will use derived types so you can still have strong typing of the, the values, but you derive them from the 
hardware types. With that information, with those kind of types, a good analyst can compute the maximum uncertainty we, uh, thanks to the model that we have seen. And so you can, it's a kind of portability if you want, where you run the same program on two machines and machine A tells you pi equals 3.14 plus or minus 10 to the minus 3. And on another machine, it will tell you pi equals 3.1415 plus or minus 10 to the minus 5. These are different results, but both results are correct. So you do your computation, and after the fact, you are able to compute how, what is the maximum uncertainty of your computation. Another case is what I call what I call a priori accuracy. You absolutely need some accuracy. For example, you are computing the angle of entrance of a shuttle in the atmosphere, and if you are too steep, the, the shuttle will burn. If you are too flat, then the shuttle will not be able to enter the higher level of the atmosphere. So you took a numeric analysis to analyze your computation, and he determined, for example, that to get enough accuracy for the angle of entrance, you need to have your values with seven digits. You may have more accuracy than that with your floating point type, but that's not useful because, in any case, um, your physical devices won't give you enough uh, accurate, enough precision to make use of that. However, if you have less than that, then it will you you take a risk of burning the astronaut. So you require digit seven, and in any case, the compiler will provide you what you ask. And of course, you have the ability to have fixed point number with fixed scales also, where you, you tell the accuracy you need and the compiler will provide it. So this, in that case, the accuracy is guaranteed independently of the implementation. So in conclusion, first of all, don't think a number with a decimal point is always a float. As soon as it's not an integer, people think it's a float. In EDA, we have a must, much richer set of numbers, and you, we have various ways of defining our non-integer number. The EDA model offers the ability to use all the various uh, hard, uh, facilities provided by the hardware. Not just one or two or three predefined floating point times. Everything that's uh, available on the computer can be used by the compiler. And, of course, you, you, depending on what you want to model, it can might be more appropriate to use floating point types or fixed point types. So the choice is yours. We have a very rich modeling of real value. That's something that should, should be of interest to your numerical friends. Thank you for your attention, and we'll move to questions. about big numbers is it accepted in 2020x which i believe it's going to become 2022 yes 
uh, there are big numbers in 2022, both uh, big integers and big We numbers. hear you a little bit, but uh, I don't know if maybe it's um, oh. uh, that you are far from the microphone or... Not further. Do you one, two, three, do you hear me now? Um, not great, but we can understand you. Do you hear me? Okay. Uh, I'm saying that there are big number packages, both big integers and big reals. Uh, these are just packages, so it's not part of the definition of the language itself, it's just uh, libraries like for any language, but they are provided with the ADA 2022. Okay, um, if, if you can speak louder, maybe the sound quality will be better, but I think we more or less understood what you just said. Mm. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> Let me say, uh, sorry, there might be something wrong here. I'm trying to I'm muting and muting. Do you hear me now? Uh, we Do hear you more or less the same, but. If you speak louder, I think maybe that solves a bit the problem. And yes, there is a bit of echo. This one, do you hear me? Oh, is perfect. No, much better. Oh, okay. much. Um, oh. Luckily, we have a bit of time for the questions and answers. If you would like, maybe to repeat the the answer to the first question to the okay. big number. So, uh, Ada twenty twenty two will provide big integers and big reals with two different packages. Uh, these are just packages. You don't need anything special at, uh, in the language itself. It's just libraries like in any other language. Okay, thank you. Um, another question from Stefan. Uh, this one is a bit longer, so I think you should look at it. But basically, he asks, what is the recommended way to make fixed point calculation when you have to convert domain types? Example, and he gives an example of different definitions for volts, amperes, ohms, and power. What would you uh, recommend? Uh, I've seen the, the, the message. Now I can see it. Uh, well, in general, this is heterogeneous computation. So you have to return first the type to some common type that you compute beforehand to be wide enough with enough accuracy or whatever for your computation. So you convert to that intermediate type, which is somehow the mathematical type without physical uh, dimension. And then you return, you, you do your intermediate computation with that type, and then you return to the physically type, if I can say so, um, type in the end. But you certainly need, you need some uh, numerical analysis to determine exactly what that intermediate type for computations should be. Okay, then Derek asks a question of um, any experience with ADA and POSIT format. So, uh, POSIT is another item like IEEE. It, it's certainly compatible. I mean, POSIT has uh, fixed values and also interval values. So, it's com it, it should be compatible. I don't know if there is concrete experience or I don't know if uh, what computers use POSIT actually. But the idea is that the ADA model has been made to be implement independent of any uh, hardware model. So there is no reason that it shouldn't be compatible. Actually, looking at it, uh, POSIT is based on uh, interval arithmetic. So it should be quite easy to map ADA to, to POSIT. But that's a matter of implementation. I don't know if there are currently implementation of ADA over POSIT machines. Okay, thank you. And um, one question from me. Mm -hmm. In the case we're using floats, normal floating point types, and fixed point types, what would you recommend when an analysis of precision has to be done? If you mix uh, them, 
that's what you are saying well if you mix them or more specifically if i can choose any of them uh, if the hardware doesn't have any restriction if my requirements don't have any specific clause regarding the types that have to be used if i could choose between fixed point or floating point what would you recommend if i need to control uh, the uncertainty and the result well if you need to control the uncertainty and the result then you have requirements somewhere so uh, <laughs> i would say look at your requirements and see what's uh, available uh, the main difference between EDA and other languages in other languages you more or less have a choice between short and long floats. Here you have a whole range of possibilities and it's certain that, uh, well, having a choice is more difficult than having no choice at all. But um, in general, uh, fixed point types have a more tricky arithmetic, especially with multiplication of fixed point types where there are issues regarding accuracy people are um, generally more used to using floating point types so if you have no special requirements you may uh, use the provided floating point types like in other languages if you have some more requirements then it will depend on your requirements of course okay thank you um, and regarding the accuracy analysis uh, in ADA, um, especially, mm -hmm. what what approach would you recommend people take? Uh, um, I suppose starting from a set of uh, specifications or requirements, how would uh, you recommend that people do a, a precision analysis? Okay, refer to a numerical analysis uh, analyst. I mean. Numerics are very tricky, you know, and uh, if you're not, uh, I don't consider myself as a, a numeric uh, expert, but I know just enough to tell you that if you don't know the numerics, you are likely to make big mistakes. So if you have needs, uh, with accuracy, with your computations, and you're not familiar with that, refer to someone who knows. That's the best advice I can give because it's really tricky what can happen. Okay, and if you can answer this shortly, what is the best way to handle potential overflows and underflows to find them in ADA? Okay, first in ADA there is no underflow. Uh, as I mentioned in my talk, it may happen that the model interval of the result covers the value zero, but the value zero has no special meaning. It's just one possible uh, real value like any other one. If the model interval of the results covers zero, then uh, Jim, yeah, the system is going to close. So okay. if you have more questions, please join this room. <laughs>